The U.S. Anti-Doping Agency issued a blistering report Wednesday accusing seven-time Tour de France champion Lance Armstrong of being at the center of a, quote, massive team doping scheme more extensive than any previously revealed in professional sports history, end quote. We're joined by Wall Street Journal's Reid Albergati and Vanessa O'Connell, who blew this story wide open in 2010 with a detailed account from one of Lance Armstrong's old teammates, Floyd Landis. Thanks for coming on, guys. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. So first in your article today, it's on page one of the journal, it talks about this report from the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency talks about a small army of enablers mm -hmm. for Lance Armstrong, correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, basically this report is a summary of more than a thousand pages of documents, emails, affidavits, financial records that all detail the doping that went on allegedly on the U.S. postal team. Um, I think, Vanessa, I don't know what you think, but I think the most interesting stuff, the interesting read in all of this is the affidavits that were actually published on the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency's website yesterday. Yes, the affidavits are fascinating. They're, you know, in some cases double digits long, and many of the writers basically laid out instances of EPO use, blood reinfusions of... EPO is a drug that basically boosts red blood cell count? A hormone, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and of evidence that Armstrong was doping. Why, why did they talk now, Vanessa? Why, why, are, why are the teammates coming forward? Well, they're coming forward now because essentially um, USADA had enough evidence on them to ban them from participating in the sport, and they were able to, by cooperating, in some cases, get a slightly shorter suspension from the sport. So, um, in, in almost every case, they had actually testified or done an interview with federal agents in the criminal investigation that started in 2010 and mm -hmm. ended earlier this year. So they had already sort of told their story. Um, it was on the record. They decided that, you know, they might as well cooperate with, uh, with USADA in this investigation. A lot of them were still, or a handful of them were still riding. So by cooperating, they could get a a lighter punishment okay. for, for doping in the sport. Okay. Like a six month but suspension, the, for we, instance. We, by the way, we do have some pretty damning language from the USADA report with respect to, John, to Mr. Vauders that we'd love to show. Uh, Jonathan Vauders watched as Armstrong injected himself in front of Vauders with a syringe used for EPO injections, saying, now that you are, let's move forward, doing EPO2, you can't write a book about it. Right, that was, now this is Jonathan Vauders was a teammate of Armstrong. He's also a big figure in the sport of cycling. He's a team director of one of the biggest American cycling teams, um, very respected guy in the sport and you know you read his affidavit and he's saying you know he said this was in September of 2008 he's sitting in in uh, it's very detailed he's sitting in Armstrong's hotel room and he watched Armstrong inject himself with an EPO syringe under his skin on his stomach it's you know it's just like very uh, gripping stuff when you very read detailed. it. Very detailed. By the way another writer uh, Levi Leipheimer wrote, wrote you read wrote you a letter about this is the first time he's admitted to using, to, to doping, correct? What did he say? Right, in today's paper, these are the only public comments he made on top of his affidavit. And this is Levi Leipheimer's, um, there's his, his statement there, um, one of the, the greatest American cyclists, really. I mean, finished on the podium of the Tour de France, one of four Americans to, to do that. Um, so this is a guy who's a, a hero in the sport and really just saying, a lot of stuff. I mean, he, he said his EPO use started before the U.S. Postal Team when he was on another American team called Saturn that doesn't exist anymore. And then it just kind of escalated from there. And, I mean, just to hear a guy admit all these things is, is, is really gripping. And, this is Levi Leipheimer, by the way. And what he said in the letter, which is in, in today's paper, um, is that, you know, he had no choice. He thought he felt like he got in the sport and it was either dope or go home. And that's really something that... that comes out of this report is that there was a lot of pressure from Mr. Armstrong, correct, Vanessa, that teammates had to dope or maybe get thrown off the team? Well, essentially, it was um, about using an EPO, for instance, or just getting creamed. So, for instance, George Hincapie in his affidavit explained how when, the, when Armstrong's team and Hincapie's team, Hincapie is a former teammate of Armstrong, when they got crushed at a race in Italy, Armstrong said, this is ridiculous, we keep getting crushed. We've got to do something about it. And it was clear that, to him, Cappy, anyway, Armstrong was implying that the team should get on EPO. By the way, we only have a, a, a few seconds left, but there was another thing, an interesting thing in this affidavit with uh, the connection to an Italian doctor and payments that came from Lance Armstrong to the doctor over a period of years. Mm -hmm. Michele Ferrari, uh, who's one of the 
co a controversial doctor in the sport. Um, Armstrong said he stopped working with Ferrari in 2004. USADA got a hold of financial records from Italian police showing that there were payments made, you know, up until I think it was 2006, right, Vanessa? Very recently. Um, yeah, so these were direct payments from Lance Armstrong. Direct you? payments, and they had other evidence that you know he was even working with him after his comeback, you know, in in '09 and and 2010. Great. Doping is a very difficult thing to prove. So um, you know, there was a ton of evidence that came out yesterday, but it's tough. I mean, a lot of times people are not necessarily reinfusing blood and fun on another person. So. Mm -hmm. Well, for a lot more, guys, thank you so much for joining us. There's a ton more in your story, which is on page one of the journal, so be sure to check that out in the paper, and there's more online, of course.